Hallelujah. So we're thankful uh, this morning uh, for those who have come uh, to receive financial impartation, financial uh, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, nuggets. Amen. God is about to release on this morning. Um, we're here at our uh, financial empowerment seminar and the title of it this month is planning for your financial and business success workshop we're here at the mouth of god ministries where there's always a fresh word from god it's myself elder everett marshall and minister kimberly willis we uh, lead the stewardship team here at the mouth of god ministries and we bless apostle cooper and leading lady cooper who are the leadership over this house so once again this is about finances this morning um, if you have questions for those who are here today, you know, feel free to ask. Um, if it's not a question, you want to interject something, feel free. You know, this is a family atmosphere. Those who are tuning in via Facebook Live, you know, we welcome you and we're thankful that you're here today. We're definitely not going to waste your time. We know it's a Saturday morning and you have committed and sacrificed to be here. So we thank you for it. Now. Planning for your business and success workshop. We have this powerful PowerPoint, and I'm just going to briefly go over the disclaimer. It says, the information presented through the Mouth of God Stewardship Ministry are for general information and should not be taken as con constituting professional advice. The Mouth of God Ministry stewardship leaders are not financial advisors. You should consider seeking independent legal financial, taxation, or other advice to check how information provided through our resources address your unique circumstances. And last but not least, the Mouth of God Ministries and leaders are not liable for any loss caused, whether due to negligence or otherwise arising from the use of or reliance on the information provided directly or indirectly through our teachings or electronic tools. Now, the first thing we're going to deal with, so um, dealing with a plan by a show of hands, who in here has actually created any type of plan before? A plan. With, with a plan for what? Business. What else? Family. Minister Kuana. What have you planned for before? Yeah. So you can play exactly. So you can plan for just about anything in life. And do you think your trip? Or your finances, if you didn't have a plan, how would, have, how would it have gone? Not good. It, it wouldn't have gone, right? It would have been real sloppy. So we see that a plan is actually a blueprint or a design. Does anybody know any engineers here or architects? You know they have a huge spreadsheet, a huge blueprint, and it looks like a lot is going on, but they have to have that. If they were to build a bridge or an underpass or a road or a new highway without a blueprint or a plan, how many know it wouldn't be safe, right? They would build it, you know, a uh, rhubarb would be sticking out here, there wouldn't be enough concrete here, the measurements would be off, nothing would be leveled. So when people would start to drive on it, it would cause chaos and haywire on the highway. A plan is actually fun because it gives direction, it can be adjusted and altered to give you the desired results. So let's turn our Bibles to the book of Proverbs 21 and 5. Proverbs 21 and 5. And when you get there, you can say, word up. All right. Proverbs 21 and 5 says, The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness, but of everyone that is hasty, only to want. And my translation here that I was actually studying on and meditating on this whole week says, the plans of the diligent lead surely to plenty, but those of everyone who is hasty, surely to poverty. Now, if we look up the Greek definition of the word diligent, it actually has hasty or hastiness within that definition as well. But I come to find out that there's a big difference there is a, a distinct difference between somebody who is diligent and somebody who is hasty. What do y'all think about that? The difference between somebody who is diligent and somebody who is hasty when it comes to plans and making preparations. Somebody that's hasty is not someone that's organized. Somebody right. who's diligent is intentional. Yeah. So, like, they have a plan. Um, there's a consistency there, whatever that plan or whatever that end goal is. So that's, that's right. what I would say. That's right. Go ahead, Mr. Kwan. 
I would say also a hasty person, they would easily quit. Mm-hmm. Versus the diligent person, regardless yeah. of the obstacles, like they're focused on the goal. That's the right. Goal. That's right. A hasty person, like Minister Keith said, really has no plan. So here's the key. You make a plan, and then you take diligent action on, com- on, on doing what it takes to make that plan you know, come to pass, right? But a hasty person just goes out there and starts something, or they might get a prophetic word you know, from a, a you know, pro- pro- prophet this or prophet that, but they have no plan, so they just go out there and start something, and they end up paying the price for it or paying the piper for it you know, six months down the line, you see? So as we see, it says, the diligent make plans. And this particular verse says, it doesn't say that the plans of the saved it just says the plans of the diligent. So here's the deal. You have many people who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ who we believe in, but they make plans, and they're diligent with those plans. So we see them successful above you know, any type of dream, imagination we can ever think of, right? Because they're diligent, and they're diligent, and they're making the plans. And it's unfortunate that you see many people within the church today that they don't have plans. You know, we talked, we kind of discussed this before. Um, it seems like financial stewardship, because it takes discipline, because finance takes discipline, you know, people will run here, run to and fro to prophetic conferences, even the church, which is great. But when it comes to having uh, stuff to, you know, cause you to be, be rich, cause you to be debt free, you know, cause you to be wealthy within the kingdom, people shun away from it or they don't show up for it. But we're about to change that this morning. Amen. So just because you're saved does not mean that you have a plan or adequate plans to financial freedom. Many love Jesus, but they have no plans on how to become successful, so they stay stuck in life. You see? And we don't want anybody to be stuck in life. A wise person devises a plan and works diligently at it. The hasty person runs out and starts something without preparation or consultation. Now, diligence comes from that Greek word, spudazzo, and it means to give speedy attention to. Because what good is a plan that you write now, but you don't start, start it until a year later, right? You've got to shake the dust off of it. And nine times out of ten, if you've got to start over or God will give that plan to somebody else. We see it so many times. We might have gotten you know, plans in a dream or plans overnight or an idea. And we didn't put plans of preparation to it. So three to six months goes down the line. And you look at, that's for example, you say, let's say I see uh, Elder Gabe and he's doing it. I'm like, man, I thought of that six months. But the only difference is not that that person is smarter than you and actually better than you, but they did it and you didn't do it. That's the key. You see? Now, let's turn our Bibles to the book of Luke. And we're in Luke 14 and 25. Luke 14 and 25. When we get there, we can say word up. And for those who are on Facebook Live, once again, we're in the book of Luke. We're on 14 and we're starting on 25 and going to 30. Thank you for joining in. If you have questions, feel free to post them. And the Bible says, and this is Jesus speaking, so we need to take heed to it. 20, I'm sorry, yeah, 25. And there went great multitudes with him. And he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, ye and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Verse 28. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost? whether he have sufficient to finish it. 29 says, Lest happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. So that's why we need plans. Now, exegetically speaking, this particular verse, Christ was talking about the cost of discipleship and what it would cost to count the cost, to make preparations. Don't just join to jump into something without seeing, okay, what is this really going to take for me to undertake? What is it going to take for me to start this business? You know, what is it going to take for me to become 
financially successful. Yes, I might be a thousandaire right now, but I want to be a millionaire in such and such years. What mentally and spiritually and more than anything emotionally is it going to take for me to get to that level? You see, and a lot of us get frustrated because we don't see uh, our plans come into fruition overnight, but it takes time. God has to take you through certain processes, certain trials, circumstances to grow you and get you to where you need to be, especially emotionally. OK, now, are there any questions, comments or concerns before we continue? All right. Yeah, go ahead. As far as the emotional aspect right what would you suggest or some steps to prepare emotionally yeah or I guess what is maybe work for you if you've gone through that similar thing yeah so for the believer uh, more than anything and we, we always go back to it stay in the presence of God on a daily basis don't miss an hour of prayer on a daily basis and then especially when it comes to business um, a lot of times what happens is we get frustrated or uh, emotionally uh, out of tune because, you know, nobody's buying our, pro our products. Um, it seems like we might have one good week and the next week things keep, uh, things, you know, continue to stay dr 